Jack. I'm a challenging you to an arm wrestling match, rabbit. Coochie coochie coo. Oh. <laughs> I thought I taught a pudding tag. <laughs> I just love technology. <laughs> Stretch your stuff. The crazy thing is, I don't even wear clothes. Hello, amusement park. No filthy animals on my ride. Oh, brother. This place isn't kidding around. I am amused. I clean this in the name of Mars. Bring the kids. I just love these new streaming channels. Woohoo! Let's call for a celebration! That's it! Hey everyone, I am Damian Holbrook from TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider, and I am here today for the Looney Tunes Cartoons panel at SDCC at Home, and I am so excited about this. Looney Tunes, obviously, been around for almost 100 years now. Huge part of my childhood, a huge part of my reasons for trying to get out of school sick when I was a kid because they ran during the afternoon and, you know, sometimes you get stuck at school. And so if I could stay home and watch them, then, you know, that was it. So I've kind of grown up with these characters. So this is technically for me, this is like the Justice League of cartoons, this cast and this panel. So I am so excited to bring them out. We're going to talk all about the new stuff. We're going to show you guys a, an exclusive cartoon. And, uh, and we're gonna get some inside information on how they do all this. So first let's bring out executive producer and showrunner, Peter Browngard. Hey, Comic-Con. Woo! All right, supervising producer, Alex Kerwan. Hey, everybody. Woo! Art director, Aaron Spurgeon. Yay! Hey. Uh, all right, now our boys cast, we've got Eric Bowser, who does Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and my personal favorite, Marvin the Martian. Hello, Earth Creature. Bob Bergen, who does Orky Pig. It, 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 don't stutter, Damien, don't stutter. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Candy Milo, who most famously does Granny. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you all. <laughs> and Mr. Jeff Bergen, who of, of all of his characters, he also does Elmer Fudd. Oh, I don't get that wascally weapon if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> oh, man, this is, this is heaven. First of all, I need to ask, like, I know that this is a job. This is a career for you guys, but you do understand how important these characters are to the fans, right? Mm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. for sure. And we don't take it for granted. We, no. uh, it's, it's a mutual admiration society when we get to work together. We, I miss you guys and yes. miss working with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but th this, this franchise is a pleasure and this particular show is beyond a pleasure. So when you guys first start taking on these characters, because so a lot of you have been doing them for years, like, do you feel like you're now the gatekeepers of them? Mm. Uh, I, yeah. I feel like just like for the time being, but like usually it's like, you know, it's, 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 it changes all the time. Like uh, not, not one particular reimagining or reboot is the same as the next, uh, but what remains the same is the, in, the integrity of the characters, the characters themselves, the situations might be different, but I feel like as, as long as the performers are told to be these characters that we've known since the 1930s and 40s, that's the most important thing. Yeah, Alex and I said early on in the production that we're we're not the first people to work with these characters and we certainly won't be the last people to work with these characters. Yeah. So, uh, so you're all kind people. of a massive legacy. Yes, uh, just, absolutely. The yeah. Excellence, award-winning uh, cartoons and just icon, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, you can't find a kid who doesn't know these characters. You can't find right. an adult who doesn't know these characters. <laughs> The tattoos alone. <laughs> like copyright infringement. Um, so when you guys, for the producers, when you started working on this new version, um, because the amazing thing is, it's so evocative of what I remember as a child. These shows, like as soon as they start, it feels like this cartoon could have been from 1970. 
what was it like, what was your process of making a modern cartoon feel so rooted in the history of it? Um, a lot of homework. I mean, I, we, I grew up a fan, a huge fan. Uh, it's part of my life. One of the reasons I got into animation in the first place. Uh, but I, I just always thought to myself, why did they, why, A, why do, would you ever change it? And B, why aren't they still just making shorts? Because I feel like the characters lend themselves to short story format and short gag cartoons. And, um, and it was, it was that just honed in on the aesthetic that I loved and I knew Alex loved and Aaron loved and a lot of the people on the crew loved uh, and trying to recapture that, that visual look and style from, from the 1940s and, and 30s, 40s and 50s. And, um, try to recreate it in, in this modern age. You know, uh, I have to hand it to Pete or early on, you know, had that vision of like, we want to tap into the, just the like zany energy of that 1940s stuff. Um, that that was kind of our favorite period and era of, of the shorts. And we just wanted more of that. And what we kept saying is like, we didn't want to, uh, we, we didn't want to set out to reinvent it and we didn't want to set out to put new sensibilities on it. We knew we're a group of artists and our own sensibilities would come through and they had to come through. And the artists that we, that we work with, because that's what the classic directors were doing. They were putting in things that they thought were funny, but um, we were going to let that happen naturally. We weren't going to start with a, you know, here's a clever new take on what, what these characters in these shorts could be. What we love about the shorts is that they're um, wonderful slapstick humor. And we just wanted to get back to how do we just go back to building really great slapstick shorts, which is what the original uh, ones were and, and be real true to the way they paired the caring, uh, paired the characters and um, just the, you know, the way they built comedy dynamics. And, uh, and just kind of make make more of them. That's what I appreciated so much about this this new set is that you didn't try to do like a reboot. Like literally the only thing that would clue anyone into when this was made is at one point Bugs pulls out what looks like an iPhone. <laughs> That's it. That is literally it. Like you didn't put them in like new clothing. You didn't put them in new settings. Like it's it's rooted in that that history and. and you're doing something, you're, you're doing it by storyboarding, correct? Like this is like the, the yeah. way of doing this, right? There's a funny little story when they, when HBO Max bought the series, they sent a bunch of the cartoons over to them to look at and they wrote back, no, we want, we want the new ones. They didn't realize. <laughs> That's cool. That was really, really cool um, to feel. Yeah. We, we, we sort of approached the whole production as, as much as possible in 2020 or 2017 when we started um, as the way they did the productions in the, in the thirties, forties and fifties. And it was uh, run by cartoonists. It was written by cartoonists and drawn. We draw pictures. We get in a room together, the board artists, directors, and we do sketches, gag drawings, like not even have a story yet. Just bugs is starving in the desert. What do we do with that? What do we do with, you know, what's, what's that story? What's, you know, and then we start trying to frame a cartoon around it. And it's when you have the cast of characters like the Looney Tunes and those strong archetypes, it's like kind of playing in a dollhouse and kind of going, who's, who's the best matchup for this type of story? Is it Elmer versus a Bugs? Is, is it more fitting for Elmer to be the adversary or is it a Sam? Yeah, very, you know? very long conversations. You know, what, what the difference between a, you know, an Elmer Daffy cartoon versus an Elmer Porky cartoon was. And, yeah. you know, during a story process, we'd, we'd switch back and the same with, you know, Elmer and Sam. Um, because those, like Pete's saying, those characters were designed to exploit a certain type of dynamic of comedy. And it's all just like, it's, it's fine tuning the gears a little bit like, oh, it's 12% funnier if it's this character with this character. And Aaron, because you're the art director, mm -hmm on a cartoon, I feel like that's like the golden job. Like, it's art. It's the hardest job. It's one of the hardest jobs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is your job on this? Because it's beautiful. And the crazy thing, again, like, 
it beautiful. feels like these colors are, you know, you, you haven't updated the colors. You haven't like given us a new, you know, palette. Right, right. Well, first of all, thank, thank you for the comment. Um, it's it's uh, um, <clears throat> my my job basically is to make sure that the staging for these characters is the best it could possibly be, and also to give homage to uh, uh, or homage to uh, the the originals, and uh, uh, you know. And on that question of you, earlier, you had mentioned the uh, you know how do you bring a cell phone into you know this like into these classic you know these classic cartoons, and uh, um, basically, you know, it's it's uh, we what we do is we we research and and try to make things not so things now are really edgy and really clean, and so we just kind of mix the aesthetic of what the of of how things might have been manufactured in the past and and just bring it up into the new age. Yeah, and it's it's I gotta say it's just so much fun to watch these because again it does feel like. I'm watching these, I'm like, why didn't I, why haven't I seen this one before? Oh, that's right, because this wasn't airing back when I was a kid. <laughs> Aaron, I don't know if I told you, I, uh, I had a reporter ask me, a reporter who had seen the first three episodes and, and loved them, and he said, so are you guys using vintage backgrounds from old cartoons? <laughs> you know, because, right. You're building and, everything from scratch. I have to say, there's also something that I noticed, and maybe this is something I missed as a child, but there are certain moments where I'm like, there's a Dali-esque vibe to some moments. Yeah, yeah for sure. Hosto-esque moment where like, I think it's Porky's face or maybe it's Elmer's face is like rearranged. Mm -hmm. Looks like a Picasso. <laughs> and then there's the Wile E. Coyote moment where he's in like, he's in the, the rock and then he's washed away and he goes down the drain. <laughs> I was like, that's a Dali moment. Are you guys planting like high art Easter well, eggs? In that's the funny you say that because Aaron, one of the early things that Aaron did art direction wise that I was so impressed by was that he looked at and researched artists from that era, like either the fine artists from that era or even, I remember going into your office one time, Aaron, and you had like um, inter interior design magazines from the 40s and looking at the patterns and the colors and the design of that era and, and trying to bring that into the style. And I think that, that I mean, Aaron's hard work and attention to detail is what makes it feel like it's from that time. You know? And not only just looking at the old cartoons, but looking at the, mm -hmm. that whole time period. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask, the Elmer Fudd, like does Elmer Fudd have a beat, like a house in Palm Springs? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's doing pretty good. Actually, yeah, Elmer's like always Elmer had a glow up. Yeah, like, he, he oh, Elmer always you know, was pretty wealthy. If you watch some of the old ones, he always was well dressed in a lot of them. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. sometimes he was just a waiter. And sometimes, you know, but but uh, but yeah, he was, he was, I think he had always had some money. Uh, I was like, this well, is amazing. Money. This is something that I miss completely. <laughs> All right, so let's talk to the cast because the voice cast, like, this is something I think is still very rare in the industry is a lot of times you guys record together. Yeah. Most mm -hmm. animated shows now do not. So let's walk through that process. What, where does it start for you guys? Well, first of all, I think a lot of it for television, they're going to have as many cast members as possible in the same session. But schedules, because we're all very busy, doesn't always allow that. It starts with we get sent the storyboard and the scripts and we do our homework and we make choices and then we go to the session and it's it's very collaborative. We, we, we start recording, we've got Jack Fletcher as our, as our voice director. These guys are in the room. We'll do yeah. a run on a scene and they'll right. come up with ideas and adjustments and they're very collaborative. They, they allow us to go, hey, let me try something a little bit different. Um, so it really is completely a, a, a team effort to do these and, and a pure joy. And you know what's interesting, Damien, is that uh, Eric and Candy and Bob and I, we get uh, the storyboards ahead of time. So we get to see it. And it's like, it's kind of like a comic book. It's so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's not something we normally get. I mean, at least I have it in series work. So it just, you feel already like more connected to it uh, as opposed to just looking at a script. Mm -hmm. So that, that just makes it so much more fun. Well, I think what brings us back from some of the things that you were talking about, Damien, that you really like about this show is um, not, a, a, not a lot of other Saturday morning, no matter when it airs. This is really a Saturday morning feel. It's the pace of the comedy. 
-hmm. Like this is not mm -hmm. a show that every voice actor, this is up their alley. This is not only are you giving homage, uh, as Aaron said, to the characters of the past and giving that 40s feel, you have to have that black and white film a uh, sense of timing and rhythm, and you're not all, you're not only perfecting. Ooh, I hate the word, a better word, guys. Uh, imitation, where you're getting that voice print. I do the voice of June Foray for Granny, and to get that, and then keep up the timing and know what in the script is Granny's gag. Where's Granny's turn? Where's her comedy come in? Um, she's never quite the dummy you think she is, and you just know she drives a hot rod um, car. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So I think that the voice actors, we're people who are loud, fast, and funny. Mm. 40 style. It sounds like <laughs> you guys are, in a way, you get to be like a comedy writer's room and yeah. also the actors. So mm. taking it through that entire organic process must be so gratifying when you finally see it, knowing that basically from the ground up, you guys have created this entire thing. And also taking our best memories from like the original original yeah. run of Looney Tunes, uh, and, and and going going with like the whole like imitation versus performing these characters. So what if you can do a catchphrase or two as a as, as a voiceover performer? You have to be able to kind of almost predict and even think like, yeah, what would June do? What would Mel do? What would right. Arthur do? What would uh, Stan do? You know, like in any of those situations where this dialogue has never been performed before by anyone but us in 2020 or, or the last couple of years. So it's, it's, it's. And these guys make our job a lot, very easy. I mean, we're talking about the top, the top of their game in the business. So it's like, just let them go. And, you yeah, know. And, yeah. Does that come up when you're like, okay, we have to draw like Elmer's face being smashed in, but we know they can do that voice. Yeah. Of, him after the fact, like, you know that you can draw that and, and have that Yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of these actors are people we chose. Um, and again, lots of people have done these, these voices, but um, we, when we cast it, we sort of knew what we were gonna do with the visuals, which was, we wanted to do a, a uh, we wanted to do a version that felt reverent to the way the characters used to look and feel, but didn't feel conservative where we could really caricature uh, what the characters look like and really push and stretch. And, and it wasn't this very precious, you know, like quaint version of how you might remember the characters. And, um, you know, one of the things we were struck by um, with, with Eric right away is it felt like he was doing the same thing with the Bugs voice that we were doing with the drawings where he was trying to stretch out in it and, and try to sort of break through the boundaries, but he has such a deep love of knowledge of um, the shorts that he was referencing very specific things from very uh, specific shorts at the same time. And that was sort of a, um, that was a tightrope walk we were trying to do with, with the visuals too, it was, it was, it was make it feel true, mm -hmm. but also being able to surprise and jar you with it as well. Reverent uh, is the word. Reverent yeah. is the perfect yeah. word. And it, by the it way. feels like the, it feels like you guys have taken so much care to make sure that this feels exactly like Looney Tunes should feel. You know, well, like also the, the the good writing and good drawing acts itself. Mm -hmm. I, I think the first I think the first one, Pete, if, I, if correct me if I'm wrong, was was Curse yeah, of the Monkey bird. bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember looking at that storyboard before our session going, oh my God, yeah. this is a Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> and seeing the expressions and the gags, it was like, you know, your, your mind goes to 1942. Yeah. And it, right. it, as an actor, it was, it was a privilege to be able to perform with the, the, the drawings that you guys have so lovingly uh, produced and reproduced for today's audience because Damien, like you're saying, these are classic Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's a perfect way to set this up. We are now going to show you guys a Looney Tune cartoon that no one has seen yet. Um, and honestly, I defy anyone to watch this and think like, oh, this is a newfangled version. No, this is classic with Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> so we're going to go to that and we're going to come back and you guys are going to talk about that. So uh, let's roll it.
I can't just deliver wait until tomorrow. <laughs> in a week when the weather clears up. And risk getting a bad review on the World Wide Web? No way, Jose! We're taking that package to the Terror Inn, 13th floor, room 237, tonight! Or we can kiss our five star rating goodbye! Is this a good idea to be out here in the rain? This package is getting soaked. Remember our creed. Neither rain nor hail nor sleet or crud. We will deliver this package or our name is Mud. Speaking of Mud, we better get inside. <laughs> Nobody's home. I guess we have to leave. Nonsense! They just can't hear us over the storm! This ought to do the trick! Dares <laughs> disturb my eternal slumber! How is he no good son of a gun? I should. Can I go get some peace and quiet around here? Oh, a couple of wise guys, huh? I'll take care of these intruders. Ghost style! <laughs> huh, guess they left the door unlocked. Hello there! Package delivery! Anybody here? Anyone? Gee, there's... there's not a single fool in this dump. What lousy service! Uh, hold on, I'll get someone on the phone. Hmm, where the heck is it? <laughs> This'll get him. Don't tell me this joint has no phone! Guess there's no phone. Leave that mail for the clerk. We've got our own package to worry about. Gee, this elevator sure is they're taking a long time. Come on, come on! Aha! The dial is stuck! I know how to fix this! This sticky dial just needs a little elbow grease. <laughs> Daffy, I, I desperately want to deliver this package. I know. So do I. Hey, look! A penny! Looks brand new, too! Yes, sir! Find a penny, pick it up, and then all day you'll have good luck. It's like my mother always said. A penny saved is a penny earned. Or was that my uncle Screech who said that? Playing around in the dirt on the job, huh? Stop messing around and act like a professional! Even in the death, they lock! Gee whiz, don't people take care of themselves anymore? You fellas ought to try eating some vitamins! Some floating candles get in our way? Neither rain nor sleet nor floating candle, there's no delivery we can't handle. And besides, there's no such thing as ghosts. Online shopping last week. 
Thanks a million, boys. <laughs> Sorry I gave you such a hard time. How about a tip for your troubles? Well, you know what they say, boys. Easy come, easy ghost. <laughs> Leave your messages in the comments. <laughs> I love the, 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 the ghost stuff. Like I love the ghosty stuff. I love the like even like the Tweety Bird when you think Tweety Bird think you know they think he's dead and he's the ghost and I just I always love that world that they get to play in. For you guys that get to live in this world, what would you say is the most challenging part of being involved with Looney Tunes cartoons? Uh, living up to the. You know, standing on the shoulders of giants, trying not to fall flat on your face, balancing and, you know, like you're talking about, you know, the greatest animated comedy uh, cartoons ever made by human beings Agreed. <laughs> on Earth. Agreed. Yeah. So so it's like, well, why do you want to why do you want to put your foot in that pool? It's kind of scary, but it's it's uh it's it's a love and a passion that I have for, for those directors. I mean, I, I grew up just just knowing who they were un watching their cartoons learning the history of it and when this opportunity came up it was like i think i want to try to do this i think i want to try to uh show my love of it and and get the people that i i just i knew people out there that had the love like i did and i was able to assemble a, a crew of, of artists and and performers and writers and everything together to to try to try to work together i mean it's a lot of people involved in making animation so it was uh it was um it's scary but really rewarding and fun it's fun it's like diving in and getting to play with play in this playground and and look at the old cartoons and what if we did one like that or what if we made it look like that or what if you know it's it was it's just Amazing. That's something, something I was thinking about when watching the episodes and seeing like the credits at the end and seeing your names on those credits in that old style font and like where it used to say like those classic names that you know, mm -hmm. just your names. Like I was thinking- That's gonna make how, me cry. How cool <laughs> is that to see so cool. your name in that world? Like I got, a, I got a good so story. Cool. I got a good story with that. So when I was a little kid, I have two older brothers that are <laughs> uh, ten, uh, 11 and 12 years older than me. So I was uh, quite younger and we would watch Looney Tunes in my basement family room and I knew how to read their names, which is Carl and Tom. <laughs> so whenever Carl Stalling came up in the credits oh, in the beginning, God. my brother would go, I made, I worked on this one. <laughs> they would go to school. They would go to school and I didn't know what they were doing. They just left the house and I, thought my brothers made Looney Tunes. So oh my God, like that's so funny. Where, that's where so funny. Uh, they do a trick on me. And you know, the, the trick's still so continue. And now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, you followed in their footsteps. I, I did, I ended up doing it. I <laughs> up it. 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 Who's like, laughing now, buddy? <laughs> was it like the first time you saw your name like in that iconic form? Because that would like, like Candy, like, I would be so overwhelmed. Yeah. I. I gotta tell you, we to to take on these giants. Um, it's and with the world and our fans out there who are social media, there are private groups that I am a part of that are were waiting with bated breath to <laughs> see what we would. You even you, Alex and 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 Pete and Aaron, what you would do with it. And then the bottom of the totem pole is the voice actors. If they couldn't find fault with the creators, then we were all going to stink. And we <laughs> just don't. And I think that I'm the most, I think I've been doing this for almost 30 years as all my other colleagues have. This is the most proud of anything I've ever been on, well, ever. Hey. Right. Uh, you, you, you mentioned uh, seeing your name in that font that we used yeah. to see uh, where Mel Blank used to be and, and that's something yes. else. But for me to see my name next to someone like 
Jeff Bergman or Bob Bergen or Candy Thank Milo. You. you have to understand we're entering uh, Bugs's 80th year on this planet and in film and his existence. So, you know, uh, we look up to people like uh, like Mel, who created the original blueprint in June. Yes. Uh, yes. But I also have a period of time where I'm looking up to people like Bob and Jeff and Candy that kept the Looney Tunes alive and relevant long enough for me to be a part of the series. These are the, the men and women that did it for the next 30 years. I mean, I've only been doing it for 10, but you guys have been doing it for, you know, 20, 30 my years. Beard got, my beard wasn't white when I started. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, I want to piggyback That's on very gracious. Go ahead, Bobby. No, no, Sorry. No, 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 I want to piggyback on something Candy said, because, you know, we all, as kids, read voice characterizations Mel Blanc. June didn't get screen credit. Stan Freeberg didn't get screen credit. So my candela, mm -hmm. my darling, yes. to be able to see your name, the, the, yeah. the, the, the leading lady in these, oh, along with everybody else, it's A, so deserving, B, it's about time, and June would be so dang proud of you, kiddo, because you're you. doing such a damn good job. Thank you. I love this show a lot. <laughs> okay. And all of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's... um. I, I think that uh, our community is very small, Damien, the voiceover community. Mm -hmm. We all know each other. We all miss each other very much. But um, this is the one thing you can't fake. You can't, you can't fake what, a, like an on-camera person, you can't fake it with a look or a camera cut or a close-up. We leave a lung or a vocal cord on the floor, as we like to say, and we, we put it all out there and we take this very seriously. I've been in a lot, like like Bobby uh, Bergen, we've been in a lot of uh, incarnations of Looney Tunes. I was in Tiny Tunes. And so I think we all take great care, but if we didn't have a team of creatives that understood what we were trying to do and left us kind of alone so that we could create as a team, our actors, we'd, we'd be sunk. So. I think this is brilliant from the head down. Our show is brilliant because of our creators and our creative team, really. All Yay. right. Hi, Jeff. For all of you guys, <laughs> when you do it, like, because these are shorts, I can't imagine though that the recording process, the recording sessions themselves are very short. No, no, no. I mean, no, no. <laughs> oh my God. We could have six pages of dialogue and it could take an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like, but it's so fun though. How many times have you been asked to record someone's voicemail message? <laughs> uh, you don't want to know. Jeff, how many? It's got to be in the millions by now. Yeah. <laughs> All of us combined? A, a lot. I can imagine or, or on or Instagram, a private message. You know, could you just say hello? And I'm like, are you going to sell it? Well, now you can. Have, you can make money with that stuff. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, did you know that? Else. <laughs> yeah. My favorite. Here's here's a quick story for it. My favorite person that asked me to do a voice message was Seth MacFarlane at a Family Guy record. <laughs> and I said, Wait a minute. You want me to record your voice messages? What, what do you need me to do it? You do all those voices. He says, No, I don't want to hear myself. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's surprising. No. Seth. Uh, right. <laughs> okay, so, and since because this world is so filled with so many great mementos and pieces, what's the one thing you own, the piece of memorabilia that is the most precious to you? Ooh. Bob? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's so, something right behind you. So this thing right here, I don't know if you can see that, there you go. So that thing right there, uh, I got on eBay uh, before I closed escrow on this house. And I said to my parents, if, if escrow falls under you're going to get a giant pig in your house because I, I have nowhere to put it and he, he cost me more to have him shipped from north or south carolina than it did to win the the the, the, the auction because it was it, it was shipped on by train in a hurricane and the insurance was nuts and he was wrapped up in bubble wrapping and when i had my when i got the house and when i had it remodeled uh, before I moved in, the guys remodeling it thought he was Bob's big boy. And they were like, where do we put the big boy? And I said, it's a pig boy. It's not a big boy. And they said, no, it's Bob's big boy. We can so, same silhouette, kind of. Yeah, the same kind yeah. of same proportions. Same. Um, you guys, I want you, my fellow people on here, I want you to know that my daughter from Brooklyn, she went to a vintage store and found a vintage Looney Tunes show jacket. 
that she oh, sent wow. me. Um, and I want Ooh. you to know in preparation, um, she wanted me it to come in time for our little Zoom party that we had, a wrap party, mm -hmm. and it didn't. And I was going to wear it today, but it's a vintage show jacket. And when it came and I was sobbing and it was just the cutest thing, I was looking on the inside to see who owned it. Because who else would have a Looney Tunes royal blue show jacket? So that's the piece of memorabilia I love the most. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I thought that was cool. I got something. I got... Well, I just got oh, nice. this recently at an or auction, but it, it's one of the, uh, it's, it's, oh, <laughs> it's, cool. it's, it's dated 1935. So it's, it's one of the wow. first pieces of press artwork ever oh, done for goodness. Looney Tunes That's in nice. the history. That's history of the show. cool. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. In 1991, when I first came here uh, for a visit, I went to Six Flags Magic Mountain, and I still have this, uh, this shirt. <laughs> oh. It's an all-over Bugs Bunny. There's like a huge tear in the back, uh, probably oh from a big face. fart or something. Um, I don't know. Uh, but it's it was like uh, this, this shirt that I wore every day in, when I was in the eighth grade. Uh, probably still fits yeah. now. That's colors, those colors scream 1992. Right. Yes. I wore this on like a, a picture day. And I think uh, people were like, did. why do you wear your pajamas out in public? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hi, Jeffy, what do you have? What do you have? What you got, yeah. Jeff? I'm sure Jeff's got, got some good stuff. Back in. Okay. What you well, got, Jeff? What you well got, Jeff? this I have a few things, but I don't know. I guess it's hard to see this because it's not super bright in colors, but... Uh, at the uh, Tiny Toons wrap, after we were done, uh, nobody said anything. Steven Spielberg walked in, and he came into the control room, and it was just him and I, and I, my heart started pounding. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he had with him a lot of these model sheets. And so we sat and talked a few minutes, and he signed it, and it says, uh, it says to Jeff, Mel would be proud, Steve Spielberg. Wow, that's awesome. And uh, so I kind of had it framed, and it's uh, August that's awesome. 1st, 1990. Uh, I, have, that's beautiful. I have one from awesome. Tiny. Nice. I mean, I have, a, I have a sweetie one, and he said, I'd like to oh, feed you, you to do. my cat. Yeah, and it's framed in the that's other so room. Cool. That's really special. That's yeah, very it's special. Kinda, it's that's really, cool. that's kind of neat. Yeah. All my, all my cool stuff is locked up in my office at Warner. That's true. Alex has got some good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've got this guy, which is a really cool, bendy, strange, kind of foamy. He's yeah. kind of coming apart at the seams, but I just love the the face of these strange black bangs. The Mo, Mo Howard cool. bangs. Yeah. <laughs> Mo Howard. <laughs> Same story. Alex has uh, uh, all my stuff is pretty much at the office. <laughs> yeah, they won't let us in. I got a uh, uh, classic uh, Porky Pig that that, uh, that I won from the uh, what is it? The White Elephant. Oh yeah, <laughs> Christmas, party. Oh, wow. Christmas thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex had bought in, in uh, out of all the memorabilia I have, I miss that thing the most. <laughs> <laughs> you got some pretty good stuff back there, Damien. What's back I mean, there? Uh, the white elephant uh, is a great vintage, like 1960s Porky doll, and I put him in the bottom of a box of um, pork rinds. <laughs> the first person who opened it up realized that there is a Porky doll in the body. It's just like mm, pork rinds. That's awesome. Oh my god, oh my god that's almost like cannibalism. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so this is I have um, the Mar the pink Marvin the Martian from Comic Con. Very like, cool. Three years ago, limited wow, edition. Cool. That's different. That's cool. Yeah. And he's my guy. And then I've got the glow in the dark um, uh, bugs mm -hmm. bisected with his insides. Oh, yeah, his, his, his skull that. is yeah. showing. That's yeah. funny. That was, that's a creepy one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> creepy. And the Hannibal so, Electra edition. The <laughs> glow in the dark. Oh, oh that's, God. Cool. Yeah. that's That's what right. you want to see at night. So they had it. There was it. I'm going to need to wrap you soon, but. It's, it's been a while since you probably worked together. I'm sure you cannot wait to get back into the recording studio. I can't yeah. wait. I can't believe, you know, like you guys, I'm sure are ready to start drawing and storyboarding. What would you love to get to see your, your primary characters get to do next? Wow. That's a tough one because we've done it all. I mean, gosh, these, <laughs> these, series, these scripts are giving us so much to do. Oh, um, I'd, li I'd like to see that Porky get the best of Daffy because Porky gets beat up and he does <laughs> short. he comes back for more but i want to see daffy to get his 
Yeah. But we kind of have that. We do have one coming up, I think. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> we're all so very third against that little yellow bird. I, no. I think that I'd like to see Granny um, get back on stage because you know that she was a Gibson girl. But I think that <laughs> Granny, I think Granny needs to rap, don't you know? I think that she needs to tell it like it is. Tell it like it was. Tell it like it taint, but it could be, but it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure we have that one in the words. We don't have that one, Katie, unfortunately. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> Pete. And Eric, what about you? I mean, I'm I'm living the dream right now, just working okay. on the show. It, there really hasn't been anything like it. And again, I, I where, where I am, where these three are, and and a special shout out to Fred Tatashar, who's not not here today. Yay. Celebrating Love today. Freddy. No, these Love these guys and, and and ladies have have seen it all, and I I always feel like I am just a kid. Uh, when I'm in the booth with these with these actors and actresses, I, I feel like I'm I'm in a college free tuition, uh, or or like sitting on stage at a at a three tenors uh, concert. You know, like I I am just spoiled uh, getting to call these people my friends. But really, like I learned so much from them, and uh, I'm very thankful for just for that. We love you. Do you understand? Like you're <laughs> one of us. You you don't even know how sick you are. You're one of us. Well, listen, I want to thank you guys so much, not just for the absolute entertainment of the show, which is off the charts, but also because you represent to young artists what they can do. You know, these young, these young voice actors, these young artists, these young technicians who are looking at art and, and creating and seeing that this is, this is an, a form that has not died down, that is as vibrant as ever, and that it's, that it's doable. You know, yes. you guys are all testaments to the fact that this is doable. And if they keep trying it, you know, it can be done. And my hat is off to you guys. It's your part of an thank incredible you. legacy. Thank you, you so much, Damien. Thank you, Damien. Hey, thank Thanks, you. Damien. Thank you. Thank you. Looney Tunes cartoons available on HBO Max. Go watch them. They're awesome. You guys, thank you so much. Thank all right, you. we're going to start the Q&A. So thank if you guys you. want to start two lines over here by the mic. <laughs> Wait, there's no audience. No audience. We, can do your, we can do your cell phones. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>